Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Justin. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm gonna be filming a little get ready with me style video. I'm currently getting ready just for my day in general, but I'm also gonna be filming another video right after this. So I figured this will be a really good opportunity just for me to kind of, you know, sit down with you guys and chit chat a little bit. So while I'm actually getting ready, just doing my hair and makeup and stuff, um, I did ask you guys on my Instagram to kind of give me questions and topics that you guys may want me to talk about in this video and I did specifically ask for non weight loss related topics I do know that my channel mainly revolves around weight loss but I did think that every now and then it'll be okay to just kind of put in different videos just to kind of you know keep it fresh and also I've gotten a lot of new people on my channel recently so I feel like this will be a good way for y'all to kind of get to know me a little bit better so without further ado let's get right on into it all right guys so first things first that intro y'all just watched which probably came down to like less than a minute i'm about to spill the tea it literally took me 10 minutes to get that out i don't know why i'm having so much like i'm just struggling with just getting words out of my mouth today um i am stumbling so hard on my words so i'm hoping that since this isn't really a scripted video like i'm just kind of just gonna go off the dome that i can get through this so okay while i am getting ready one of the first things that people wanted me to talk about is hair care and skin care so as far as my hair care um i actually do already have a video on my channel showing you guys how i do my curly hair routine more in depth but i have changed my routine up just a bit um so you're gonna kind of see me like do it a little bit differently here but i will link the original video down below so for my hair care i still use the same products um as you can see i just got out the shower i this is freshly washed hair and i will use my maui moisture curl coconut oil curl smoothie along with my diva curl archangel gel as after styling product and i do just use like a spray water bottle so the main difference that I'm doing with my hair now versus before is that I'm using a lot less product and I'm also not using that Denman brush. I kind of realized that it was weighing my hair down way too much and I just didn't like that. Like I like for my hair to be more afro-y and just big and it was kind of just like super tight defined curls and that's really not what I like. And also not only that, but I'm not using as small of sections with doing my hair. Now, right now I'm actually having to um, get in there because you know, uh, it took me about 30 minutes to get set up and then 10 minutes to film an intro. So um, my hair is now like drying as we speak. So I have to really like wet it a lot, <laughs> but you'll kind of see that overall, I like, just kind of use just less product and I'm not too particular about my hair. Okay, so as far as skincare, before I get distracted, um, I already washed my face, but I use the acne.org regimen system. This isn't sponsored, I've been using this for years. I have the acne.org cleanser. I put this on my face, rinse it off, and then I use the acne.org treatment. It's benzoyl peroxide. Put this on my face, let it dry, and then I go back in with the acne.org moisturizer. Now, I will be honest, this isn't something I use every single day just because I haven't been taking the best care of my skin, but when I do wash my face, um, that is what I use. All right, so next question is, when am I gonna start my 5K journey? So if y'all um, watched my vision board video, I announced that I am gonna start training to run a 5K. So that is actually gonna be starting pretty soon. I'm gonna be starting that at the beginning of February. I wanted to start like as soon as the new year happened, but it was just way too chaotic around that time. I just moved, I was trying to get like on top of my YouTube posting schedule. And also I felt like I needed to get back on track with food before I tried to incorporate um, exercise into my weight loss journey and so i decided that february would be a good time to start um pretty much what i'm gonna do i'm gonna this is gonna be a whole series on my channel so you'll find out more about it later but i'm gonna start a walking journey first so you have like the couch to 5k program apps which i do plan on doing sometime in the future but for now i'm gonna basically do a walking 
walking a 5k program journey program thing um, i don't know what exactly it's called but just stay tuned for those videos because i'm going to explain it a lot more in depth all right so next question um i had several people asking me about clothes so like where do i buy my clothes best uh clothes places for like plus size and then also where do i buy my clothes now so for me with clothing i'm gonna be honest you guys like if y'all are caught up with me you know that i've gained weight but even before i gained weight when i was still a little bit smaller um i'm still not really in like a confident place where i'm just like go into the store and really even buying clothes every now and then i may go to target and get like a couple of really cheap tops if they just have things on clearance but overall i'm really not like into the whole fashion area to even like really give anybody advice i would say though that i like forever 21 they have cute plus size clothes but i'll keep it real with y'all they're not always plus size friendly like i feel like you have girls that are thick with like two c's who like they're slim thick but their shape is like that's more forever 21 and then you have girls like me who i have like a stomach so uh, not everything at forever 21 looks good on me because even though it's plus size it's more just regular size but bigger it's not to accommodate you know it doesn't really look very flattering on me but i do like the way their clothes look i just can't always wear them and then i also really like h&m that's a store that i currently can't even fit into right now i can only fit into like the, maybe their extra larges and even those are kind of snug on me but i do feel like once i start losing more weight and everything that's probably gonna be one of my top stores because i just like their clothes in there but as far as like plus size plus size women who aren't really trying to be super trendy like that kind of trendy um lane bryant is probably the next not the next best thing like because lane bryant they be expensive but i feel like lane bryant that's more like adult plus size if you're trying to do like teenager young 20 plus size that's probably more like forever 21. all right so someone asked me would i ever go vegan um i'm the type of person i never say never because you just never know where life is gonna take you but i can say that at this point in my life i definitely don't really see that in the cards for myself because i like meat and cheese and eggs and pretty much everything else that people who go vegan can't have so i really can't see myself eliminating like all that from my diet but you never know like maybe when i'm more mature like nutritionally mature down the line maybe i may want to like try it but as far as right now definitely not <laughs> all right so someone asked me what are my goals for 2020 um i pretty much went over a majority of them in my vision board video i'll link that down below but i have since then um thought of some other goals that i do want to add to the board and one of them is that i want to i don't know exactly how i want to phrase this but i want to become like a better cook and i want to get more comfortable in the kitchen because y'all i hate cooking like i don't like being in the kitchen I don't like cleaning. I don't like, like, I just, I, it's not enjoyable for me. I see a lot of people on YouTube and they make it look so great. And I don't know if everybody feels that way, but I really don't like cooking. Like, and I feel like with my recent gain and with my recent, like, you know, fast food expenditure, y'all know all about that. It's made me hate it even more so. So one of my goals is to get more comfortable in the kitchen. I feel like a big reason why I don't like being in the kitchen is because I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm definitely not like a natural chef. I will say that like I feel like some people just grow up and they just know what to do in the kitchen that's not me I need instructions I need like damn near supervision like I really need help and most of the meals that I've made that I've shown you guys are because I've seen other people do them like that's pretty much how I'm learning at this point is I'm watching other people do them but um yeah I do need to get really better at cooking and then also not only that but on my vision board I did say or put that little picture that said like I wanted to lose weight so like weight loss but afterwards I kind of was doing like research and just me kind of thinking about it um, the purpose of vision boards and manifesting things, you have to be very specific with your goals. You shouldn't be too general. And I feel like for me to just say, I wanna lose weight, 
that's very general because technically I could lose one pound in all of 2020 but I lost weight so I've reached my goals. I do want to go back and say specifically that for number one I do want to reach my 75 pound goal and receive my 75 pound charm which I've been trying to do for like almost a year now. So I do want to do that and I also want to really push myself to get my 100 pound charm this year so i'm not exactly sure how far i'm away from that at this moment but yeah i'm gonna go back and put that on my board because i want to be specific with saying like i want to actually lose a good amount of weight this year all right i'm probably gonna fast forward the rest of my hair because i've been talking a lot <laughs> All right guys, so another thing that I do with my hair, like I said, I no longer use that Denman brush. I actually will take my wide tooth comb and kind of um, comb it out. And what I'm trying to do is get the curls to not be so clumped up on top of each other. I want it to be very, I don't know loose is the word, word but um, very like separated, I guess, on my head because I want it to dry big and whenever I was, making them so like defined and stuff it would stay very small on my head so it just involves a lot of shaking and then i'll also flip my hair over and shake out the roots and then i do do my baby hair my edges while my hair is wet Alright, so now we're gonna go ahead and get into makeup. In case anybody has any questions about any of the products, anything I'm using, I do have a full tutorial on my channel already. And I promise you guys, I have not changed one thing about it. I hardly ever switch up my makeup routine. So go check that out. We'll leave that linked down below if you guys are interested. But getting into the next question, this is a little deep. Um, someone asked me basically how did social social anxiety affect me in college so i've talked briefly on here about how i'm just very socially awkward and i definitely have social anxiety but as far as me being in college that is when it really was just starting like it was just starting to form so i really don't think at that point i even knew what it was or what was happening because it was just so new and pretty much I, I can tell you like why I think I developed it and I mean I've already kind of talked about it on here but I pretty much this is gonna be hard doing my brows but I pretty much lost all of my friends whenever I went to college you know whenever you're in high school it's like one everybody's like one big not happy very dysfunctional family <laughs> like regardless if you like each other or not you're stuck with each other it's high school but in college, people branch out and like some of the girls I was really, really close to, they went, you know, hours away to other schools. And then my best friend actually in high school, she was a year under me. So she stayed in high school and I still tried to like keep a line of communication with her, but I don't know, over time, I kind of just felt like I was getting like a cold shoulder because she was more interested in her friends that were still in high school and then eventually when I became a sophomore and she became a freshman and she went down south like she was just more interested in I don't know it just it was too hard like I feel like if you have to work so hard at a friendship is it really worth it you know when people are constantly telling you no and stuff so over time I just kind of became like a little hermit on campus like y'all I did not have the college experience that other people had like what do they say about college you either i think they say you do one of three things you either sleep you party or you get good grades and for me i got good grades like i definitely prioritized my gpa a lot in college and trust me that's nothing to take lightly i'm so proud of myself i graduated um i think cum laude but i do wish like if i could go back and do it i would have made it a priority not necessarily to try so hard to keep the friends I already had, but I should have tried harder to make new friends while I was in college because that's like the best place that you can make new friends because there's literally like thousands of people 
who are in the same situation as you all dumped onto one campus. So anyway, I really don't think I even realized I was uh, developing social anxiety then, but it's definitely present now. And as far as how I deal with it now, I just deal with it. Like I don't have any really sound advice. I just, this is just my life now. I just deal with it. Um, it only really bothers me when I'm put in very, very uncomfortable situations. Like if I have to be in front of a lot of people or you know, if a lot of people are looking at me, like, I don't know. I just automatically feel like people are, I don't know, I'm just kind of paranoid in that way. I automatically assume people are looking at me and they're thinking the worst when they could like not even give two craps about me. But yeah, I don't even know if any of that made sense, but anyway. And also while I'm just thinking about it, um, it wasn't not only that everybody started dispersing that I didn't have friends, but also people just got into some stuff that I really was not about. I don't know, I feel like some people are gonna judge me and some people are gonna like praise me, but I don't like to smoke or drink or go to parties. And I literally, I felt like I was being peer pressured. Like, okay, if I wanna hang out with this group of people, then I have to do this. So yeah, that was another big reason why I kind of distanced myself from the people who actually did stay in town. All right, so next question is good shows to watch on Netflix. So I just finished watching You. Um, that's the show with the crazy psycho stalker Joe. Um, I didn't really enjoy this season as much as I did last season. Um, and I was kind of like the whole time I was like, okay, get to the point. But I will say that I did watch it till the end just because I kept hearing everybody talk about this plot twist that was supposed to be so amazing, which it was. But um, if you haven't ever seen that show, I think it's worth watching. Some other good shows I've watched are Gossip Girl. That's like a classic. Um, Gossip Girl, 90210. I watch all those like shows and then Grey's Anatomy is a long one that you could definitely like just get hooked on and you'll be set for several months um what else I would say it's my favorite show but the most the show that made me feel the most type of way was this show called Army Wives and it basically is about like it's a it's not a sitcom it's a drama like following people in the army and when I tell you that show had me like crying almost every episode just because it gave me such a large like respect for people who live that lifestyle because I just, I had no idea. Like I was just kind of oblivious to it, which is crazy because both of my parents, my mom and my dad were both in the um, armed forces, but that was before I was born. So I really didn't like know that, you know, side of them, but that's a good one to watch. That one will make you like, I don't know. That just puts a lot of things into perspective. Another good one is Ugly Betty. That's like a cute, funny one. The more I finished watching the haves and the have nots. I think that was on Hulu though. And that one, um, good storyline, bad acting. <laughs> That's all I could say. Or maybe it's not bad acting, it's just bad writing. Like it just, it doesn't come off very natural, but if you're bored and you just want something to watch, the have and the have nots is a good show. What else? Oh, the show um, Lost. That's a good one and I think it has a lot of seasons. Um, I did start watching this other show, it's called The Island, like I-L-A-N-D. Um, I didn't finish it cause I kinda got like weird, but I like all the shows like that of people getting like trapped on deserted islands and just weird stuff happens. Uh, my camera's dying and I'm only on my eyebrows. Y'all let me know down below in the comments what are some other good series cause I'm kinda like in between series now. And I, I need a good series that has a lot of seasons that I can get hooked on and watch it for several months. So if y'all have any suggestions, please leave them down below. All right guys, my camera died so I had to change the battery. Um, but I already finished my brows. I did the rest of them off camera. I'm about to go ahead and go into eyeshadow. That whole pan just came out on my freaking carpet. Why? 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 Just why? I, I don't understand. Why? I guess I'm gonna have to actually invest in a vacuum cleaner. All right, I'm praying there's not more that I missed, but can y'all see that? Thankfully it like stayed in one tack, but oh my gosh. All right guys, we're back. Not even gonna talk about it. Um, 
about to start on my eyeshadow. The next question is, what exactly do I do in a medical field? And this is a really good question. I get this asked pretty often. And it's actually very interesting how many people still, even though I say it in so many videos, still assume I'm a nurse, just based off of the fact alone that I wear scrubs. But for those who don't know, I work in the laboratory. And as far as what I do, my position, I'm called a SMT, and that stands for Specimen Management Technician. And pretty much my job is a sessioning. So basically, I focus on receiving, triaging, admitting, ordering, and labeling specimens. What the heck? But basically, to kind of like sum it up, um, I do outpatient stuff in the laboratory. And what will happen is, say you go to the doctor and your doctor talks to you or whatever, and say after your visit, they say, okay, well, let's take a blood sample or a urine sample, whatever. So you're gonna do that at your doctor's office and it's gonna stay with them. Then later on during the day, a courier, who is basically a person who just drives around and picks up specimens and brings them, to different places a courier will come and take your specimen and bring it to me so i'm at kind of like the front end of the laboratory area so i'll take your specimen i will mark down what exactly i got and then i from there will kind of like admit you into our system and then i will order whatever test they are wanting to do on that specific specimen. And then from there, the computer will print out a label. I will put a label on your specimen and then I will take it to whatever department it needs to go to. So normally if it's blood, it just goes to like, they're called lab techs and they like spin the blood and get it prepped ready to have the test run on them. Um, if it's like urine, swab, stool, sputum, anything like that, it goes over to microbiology. So that's pretty much what I do. It's a very entry level job. It's very easy. Um, there was no like prerequisites for it. It's not like, it's, 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 it's a job. It's not like a career. So I will just say that um, and it's all right. It's definitely very like interesting. It's different than anything else I've ever done. All right guys, my eyes are showing up very orange and pigmented on camera, but I promise it doesn't look that bad in person. Someone else asked, how is my apartment going? Um, it's going really well. As of now, I've been here for um, at least a month, a month and a few days, and it's going very well. Um, the only like downfall, which really doesn't even have anything to do with the apartment, is that I feel like I really haven't even had time to like just chill or like, I don't know, like feel like I'm getting the most out of my apartment. Like I haven't gone on a walk yet. Like we have a really nice walking trail that I haven't been able to take advantage of. I've been traveling a lot, like ever since I moved here and I don't know, but really that really didn't have anything to do with the apartment, but the apartment is great there is no weed smell no smoking smell no nasty nothing it's been great the maintenance people are great i've had them come over for just a couple little things here and there the leasing office people are great everything's been great i really can't complain i really like it and i'm very very happy with my decision a uh, one somewhat con about this place which again it really doesn't it, it, it's not not really a con but the way this place is positioned um in alignment with the sun oh my gosh i get so much sunlight into my apartment which i love because i love the sun i love to open up my blinds like god in and everything but because i work at night i literally i like wake up in the middle of the day because that's like the middle of my night and I find myself sweating like I'm cooking because even with my blinds all the way closed, the sun is like so penetrating. So I'm gonna have to get a uh, blackout blinds now. Um, I made it in my last place, not needing them. I would put like a blanket on top of my window and that was enough for me, like it was fine. But in this place, I'm gonna have to invest in some blackout blinds because it, the sun is way too intense. And for me to be sleeping during the day, like it, it affects my sleep a lot. So that's like the one thing about this place. All right, so I'm now about to go into my foundation. 
the next question um somebody asked me how did i grow my youtube channel and i had several just people wanted me to talk about um youtube in general youtube advice um what kind of camera and equipment stuff i use just stuff regarding my youtube channel and so as far as how i grew my channel pretty much a um, majority of my growth has happened this like within this last year i've had my channel since I think November of 2016 so it's been over three years now and for the first two years it was nothing like it was now um hardly anybody really was watching my videos or really cared and the main reason for that is because I had a weight loss channel but when you have a weight loss channel there's one very defined common goal and that is to lose weight and I wasn't doing that but recently um it's really gotten a lot better and I will tell you that the top best tips I can give for somebody trying to grow their channel is consistency and content. Your content and your consistency. So as far as content, just like investing in, not even investing like as far as money, but just making better content. Um, there's a lot of just basic things that I'm sure you hear every person who tries to give youtube advice say and don't take that for granted like if you hear everybody saying the same thing they're saying it for a reason so one thing that i could probably tell a lot of beginners um or not beginners but i want to make it seem like i just know everything about youtube but one mistake that i see a lot for people on youtube is their thumbnails um guys make your thumbnails just a little bit brighter <laughs> Um, take the time to actually take a picture for your thumbnail. I know sometimes I even sometimes I like forget to take a thumbnail and I end up having to like take a screenshot of the video like pause the video and like screenshot a certain moment but that really the quality versus like an actual picture where you're posing or I don't know it doesn't look as good so better thumbnails um if you're writing text in your thumbnails please make sure that your text is big enough to see because i know you may be editing your thumbnail on like a computer or even on your phone but just you have to keep in mind that whenever people are watching it on youtube they're like your thumbnail is this small on youtube so you have to like it has to be something that people can easily see and understand really quick or else they're just going to keep scrolling so that's kind of like what I mean as far as content, your thumbnails, your title, your what your actual video is about. Um, I think from what I've learned from other people, niching down is really good for beginners and people trying to grow their channel. Um, if you don't know what niching down is, it basically means like my niche, if, for y'all who don't know, is I'm in the weight loss niche, but I'm also in the WW niche. So within just weight loss alone, you have keto, you have ww you have people just doing exercise like my fitness pal you have like different you have niches within your niche and stuff so um niching down is good if you just make videos on weight loss um i mean you may do well i'm not saying that you won't but i don't know it's for me like being in a community like ww ww is such a big community and it may not be as big as just everybody trying to lose weight but it's big enough to where i feel like most people who are looking up ww youtubers they they know their favorites you know like i have several that i look to and i look up to and stuff like that so anyway niching down is a really good thing and also as far as being consistent consistency is key like i would hear people say that all the time and i just did not I did not make consistency a priority on my channel and it wasn't until recently actually this year that i really first of all i decided to put myself on a schedule um so i now post twice a week the same days every week i'm trying to get to posting at the same times but it's hard with my sleeping schedule because of my work schedule but being on a consistent posting schedule it not only helps your audience to know when to look forward to a next video from you but it also for me it helps me like know okay well like it helps me know when i need to be planning a video and when i need to be filming and editing like it helps me stay on track i guess that's what i'm trying to say um so it's actually like a double win-win it helps your audience but it also helps you and overall people really can appreciate consistency on here because i feel like 
there's so many people on YouTube that um, your audience, like if they feel like they get a sense of who you are, they're gonna, I don't know, they're gonna wanna continue to come back, so yeah. And also not only does your audience appreciate you being consistent, but YouTube, YouTube itself, like the algorithm really appreciates you being consistent and they're more likely to recommend you and promote you and stuff if you are being more consistent versus if you make a video and you go ghost for a month and then by the time you come back, nobody really, it's not that they don't remember you, but you're just, this may sound harsh, but you're going to just kind of come become irrelevant, I guess. And trust me, I'm speaking from experience because I've done that so many times <laughs> and that is definitely not the way to grow on YouTube. As far as people who are just beginning, uh, my advice for you if you're just beginning is to, for one, just start. Like if you haven't already started, go ahead and start. Um, don't try too hard like thinking about equipment or like what you're gonna do. Like it's gonna take some time for you to become comfortable in front of the camera. Um, you can go back to my first video. It was nothing like how I am now. Any, any YouTuber, their first video is so awkward because it takes time to become yourself in front of the camera. So just start, like don't sit there and wait and think like, oh my gosh, I wanna do a YouTube channel. And because I've had people tell me like they've been wanting to do a channel for years, but they just haven't. And if you go ahead and start right now, then within a year from now, you'll have a year experience. So definitely don't wait. Go ahead and start. Also, another big tip is don't go out and buy a whole bunch of money worth of equipment and stuff. Like when you're first starting, if you have a smartphone, an iPhone, an Android or any smartphone, or even if you don't have one, if you know somebody with one, use a phone before you use a camera because uh, I feel like whenever you do it like that, it's gonna, for one, it's gonna make you appreciate having a camera a little bit more. And for two, you may find out that you don't actually even like doing videos and like, that's okay. Like, I feel like people who watch YouTube may think that they wanna do YouTube because I've actually had that conversation with myself. Like, is this something I actually wanna do? Or is it just like the, the desire behind it or like seeing people do well on YouTube is that why I want to do it so it's okay if you try it and you find out you don't really like it but you would probably feel a lot better if you didn't waste 700 800 a thousand dollars on a nice camera so definitely use your phone use books to stack on top of each other just to make a tripod that's what I did for like the first year or two um, and as far as like my equipment now I have the Canon G7X. It is a vlogging camera, but I use it for everything because that's the only camera I have. Um, I'm now filming on a Joby tripod um, because I'm in a, I'm at a desk, so it's a short tripod. But I do have several tripods. I have some lighting equipment. Um, if that's something y'all are interested in, I can maybe make a video later on talking about that. But yeah, that's pretty much it about YouTube. I definitely did my contour and highlighter before I did my concealer. Okay, Justin. Also, another piece of advice I would give to people wanting to start a YouTube channel is to make sure you're starting it for the right reasons. I wouldn't go into it with the, I mean, you can go into it with the goal of one day, you know, making it like your job or, you know, making money off of it. But I mean, I'm gonna be honest, it's. It, it takes a good minute, you know, and you're definitely not going to just be seeing dollar signs from the beginning. Like it took me two and a half years to monetize my channel. So uh, I don't know, like I feel like if this is something you really, truly want to do, you would do it anyway without getting paid for it. But yeah, just make sure you're going into it for the right reasons, because especially in a niche like this, um, you're you're not just going to be rolling in dough right away. It's going to take some time. All right guys, I'm almost done. Um, I just put some uh, banai powder up under my eyes to kind of let that bake for a minute. I'm about to do my eyeliner and I think, besides setting spray, that's pretty much it for as far as makeup. All right, just went ahead and did my one eye. I'm about to do my other eye. Um, one of the more popular questions that was asked was people just wanted me to talk about relationships, so as some people ask me am i single am i taken do i have a boyfriend do i have a girlfriend what's going on and i'll just let you guys know that 
technically as far as like officially i am single at the moment um but i definitely have somebody in my life who is very special to me and is definitely more than a friend um but you know sometimes things are complicated and yeah that's pretty much all i can say about that um y'all have seen this person on my channel multiple times and i feel like most of you guys i mean we're all adults here i would hope most of you guys can probably put two and two together and you know you know but yeah that's pretty much where i'm at with that oh that why is it burning oh my gosh it's burning it's burning it's burning it's burning it's burning it's burning ah um also you guys kind of just piggybacking off of what i just said um i'm really focused this year on myself as well as like my career which is this i will just tell you guys i'm more goal driven than ever like i've never been this focused and this um what's the word ambitious like i'm very just i don't know i my focus is really on this right here um and so i'm also just kind of in a place right now where i feel like i i need to really like learn to love myself before i can really love somebody else and also vice versa for the other person like i have to be with somebody who loves themselves before they can really be with me yeah that's kind of where i'm at with that but like i'm not in a place where i'm even looking or trying to look or anything like that i'm just i'm chilling all right let me dust that off and i think i'm gonna add a little bit more highlighter just because and then some lip situation good old kermix and i gotta lock it all in All right guys, so that's pretty much it for my makeup. Now, another thing with my hair that I forgot to mention is that I no longer diffuse it right after I finish applying product. Um, I now like to let it air dry for several hours um, just to kind of let it like naturally dry out and then I'll go back in with the diffuser and just kind of give it that extra volume. So I'm gonna come back once my hair is a little bit more fully dried in a couple of hours and then I'll be showing you guys what I do from then on. All right guys, so it's been about three hours and as you can see, my hair has dried up quite a bit. I'm about to go in with my diffuser and kind of just get it to that like final um, stage. Um, I did want to let you guys know that I am going to get my hair recut, I think in February. I don't know if y'all can tell, but I literally have two lengths going on. Like the front part of my hair is kind of up to here and the back part of my hair grows way faster and it's all the way down to here. And I just don't like the way it looks, so I want her to be able to shape that up. Also, I got a new, not a new diffuser, um, but I got a new collapsible thing. This is from the Curly Co. And it has helped me out a lot. I know I said in that other video that I did not like my diffuser. Um, eventually, I will get a new setup in general, but this does help out. And especially if I'm traveling, it's easy because it just does this. Okay, so just from that, you can see it's kind of getting a little bit bigger. Not big enough though, so I'm about to pick it out. <sighs> oh, Lord. All right, guys, we're getting there. We're getting there. I know I look crazy, but just hold up. <sighs> okay, oh, it almost looks a little too. Am, am I Justin the bomb and I'm about to say my hair looks too big? Oh my gosh. Okay, so if it gets too big, sometimes I will go back in with my spray bottle because it's like, okay girl, let's tame it a little bit. And I'll just do that. And I'll just kind of play with it until I get it to my desired look. All right guys, it's pretty much as good as it's gonna get for right now. Um, my second day here is always my best day. So once I actually go to sleep tonight and then wake back up, that's when it'll be at like its fullest potential. But anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I did have one last question. All right, so last question for this video, something most people don't know about me. 
Um, I had to think about this while I was out and about, but for one, I don't think y'all know, but I used to be a dancer um, and I'm actually really passionate about dancing and I really want to get back into it. So don't be surprised if when a uh, your girl loses 100 pounds, I just start posting dance videos because I just, I love dancing and I feel like that's just something that's instilled in me. Um, and another thing I think people don't really know about me is that I'm a lot goofier than I kind of let on. You guys kind of have seen like a little bit of it here and there, like my personality kind of coming through. But I, like in person, I don't know, only like two people in my life really see that side of me because everybody else kind of just assumes I'm very shy. Um, but yeah, I think the more like I kind of just come into my own and the more I get comfortable with filming these videos, I think you guys will see more of that. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for today's video. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, kind of getting to know me a little bit better. Um, if you did, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And also if y'all have any video suggestions or requests, please leave them down below in the comments. Y'all, I literally am always looking at my comments and that's mainly where I pull all of my video ideas from. So if there's anything specific that you want to see on my channel, please let me know. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Join me on this journey and I will catch you in my next video. Bye guys.